Hey guys, uh, Adam Dupes here. Uh, I really am not looking forward to this this review. Uh, I decided to go start doing reviews because I really because I love movies and I like to bitch about the bad ones. And boy, I'm going to bitch about this one. But I'll keep it short because I'm actually kind of tired from work and uh, just been kind of sick for the last two weeks. So, Paranormal Activity, the marked ones. <laughs> um, wow, this is the most boring horror movie I've ever seen in my life. And I'm a fan of the first three. I've never seen the fourth one. I was going to, but uh, Netflix isn't working for me right now. Um, but I will get to that, although after seeing this, I'll probably pass on it anyway. <laughs> um, oh my god, this movie is bad. It's not just boring, it's unwatchable. Like, I can watch boring movies, but this is just bad. Okay, so what's it about? Basically, every other paranormal activity movie. Person starts digging into, uh, into a witch's past, or, or they're living in a place that happens to be the location of paranormal activity. Uh, and then they get possessed, kill their friends or family, the end. That's pretty much what this is. Uh, basically, a guy, uh, 18-year-old kid from Oxnard, California, in a Latino community, gets marked by a demon. Um, and he starts showing how his, the possession and whatnot. Basically, I'm mean, basically everything we have seen, but he doesn't get possessed until about 15 to 20 minutes into the damn movie. And this is a 90 minute film, or almost 90 minutes. As far as I'm concerned, that is way too long. The first three movies at least had at least told us I mean at least told us this is this is where um, that this uh, this supernatural stuff is actually happening so we got deal deal with it it already happens by the time the movie starts it takes about 20 minutes for them to actually do something about this movie the first 20 minutes, all they're doing is walking around with a damn camera and acting like idiots. The the cast is unlikable. Like I said, they're acting like idiots for the first 20 minutes, getting drunk in front of their family. They're 18 years old and they're drinking beer and tequila in front of their freaking families, getting their grandmother drunk, which honestly actually... That grandma was actually kind of cool. That was like one of the few cool thing, cool people in that movie. And I'll get, and I'll get to like some of the other cooler ones in a minute. Um, I couldn't tell them apart for the first ten minutes, or until, or at least I couldn't tell them apart until after one of them gets possessed. Then I knew who it was. Um. Their personalities are just bland. They're, I mean, and the acting is horrible. I know this is found footage and it's mostly people that have little to no acting experience anyway. But it's like they, these people aren't even trying. It's like they just grabbed whatever like Latino person who was walking on the street, just grab, picked them up from the street and says, here, we need you in this movie. That's it. That's what it was like. I honest, this is basically the revelation of the series. This basically gives you answers, but unlike some of the others that gave you some answers, these are these are answers that don't really 
lead up to anything or they don't give you a they don't God, sorry I'm <laughs> like I said I'm tired um they're answers you don't care about basically think of it as like or they're answers you already knew or you could put together from the other movies Basically, uh, Coven of Witches from the third one are um, are like looking for pregnant women, marking them to when to so that when they're when the child is born, and if it's a firstborn son, the mother dies, and the and the son is. Had, and they have to wait 18 years before they decide to finally have the son, the child possess. This is basically what happens with the main person, Jesse, I think his name was. Uh, the, um, yeah, Jesse. I have terrible names, and really, these people I could care less about. Um... Uh, his mother died at ch in childbirth, and so he's living with his sister, and his older sister, and his dad. But yeah, he gets marked. Uh, this woman who lives downstairs, who's like the creepy lady, is a witch. Uh, one of his classmates kills her because he is also like one of the marked ones. He he's the fr he gets possessed first, um, which leads to one of two scares that. Uh, one one of two scares that actually li literally made me jump, uh, where he jumps off of a, the building of a church and kills himself. That was one of the f few times I actually l legitimately jumped. But after that, I just stopped caring because this movie is so damn boring. I am I wanted to leave. This is almost a ninety minute movie. And it felt like eternity. I kept looking at my at my phone to see how much longer this shit fest I had. Because I wanted to leave. I wanted to go home and film this. Jesse starts displaying the the par uh, the the paranormal stuff that you've seen before. Like he starts interacting with the demon. He uh, the demon starts interacting with him. Like, there were parts where that was kind of cool, but at the same time, you've seen it before. It's really nothing new. Except for one part, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, like, he starts doing trust falls with the demon, and, and the demon catches him, which looked okay. Um, but at the same time, you did not care. Actually, you know what? I take that back. It was not okay. <laughs> Honestly, this is, I was I d did not have a hard time believing that this was CGI, or at least this did not look it did not look real to me, unlike some of the others, and unlike some of the others. And this is a five million dollar budget. I don't know whether how big that how, if this is the largest budget as from what I've read it is. But the first movie had more realistic special effects in it, and that was a fifteen thousand dollar budget, fifteen grand in the first one. And I found their special effects more believable than this shit. Because what is this guy doing? He's doing playing trust falls with the with the demon, and he's skateboarding with him. The de and he's like doing he's he's uh, getting air and grinding and rail grinding on uh, at his apartment. Uh, one of the other and oh and when he starts getting more evil, he's torturing his chihuahua on a ceiling and just standing there laughing. I'm looking at the chihuahua going, "Art, is that thing on the floor?" Did they like Photoshop the Chihuahua, film the Chihuahua on the floor doing like spinning around and then decide to like 
super or uh, not superimposed. Uh, just just digitally throw that footage onto the ceiling. That's how bad this the uh, special effects were in this movie. All right. Um, probably the only cool thing about <laughs> about this about the whole communication with the demon was and this and this is kind of a staple with all the other paranormal activities uh, is how they like will communicate with the demon or with an item uh, uh, an old school item now again I don't I haven't seen the fourth one but I was told that like they use connect and Skype and the camera phones which is not a bad idea but at the same time considering who owns ha about two out of three of those items which is Microsoft I feel like it's just product placement but but in the first movie they used a Ouija board and the second one oh god it's been a while since I saw the second one um they, I mean, they used a Ouija board on that one, but the, uh, there was probably another item they used. I can't remember. Um, third one, third one really utilized like '80s toys to make them creepy. Like in the third one, they used a Teddy Ruxpin. I'm already afraid of that thing because that's pretty much a Teddy, uh, a like the bear version of a Chucky doll to me. I, and they were you and they were like levitating that damn thing, I and that was just freaking me out even more. Um, the second thing they used was a light bright to show like the uh, triangle with the circle in the middle symbol at the end of the movie. <laughs> Holy shit! That 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 made me scared. Like I was scared. I'm scared of the light right now, because <laughs> of how, because of what they did with that damn thing. Like I used to play with a light bright when I was a kid. That thing is awesome to use, but what they did with that was 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 really really good. Um, and I think there were like maybe another item or two from the '80s that they used. I can't remember. I'll probably watch them again. But during the day. Because the first three paranormal activities, I actually like. I actually think they're legitimately scary. Um, here, I know I'm rambling on. Uh, here, they you they communicate with the demon using this using Simon, the game Simon, where you have to. Uh, I mean, for those who are younger, uh, the game Simon, where where. Uh, where you have to memorize which colors were were played and then hit the buttons in the correct sequence. They were using this to talk to the demon. Like they were like they asked a question and for yes, the green light uh, he touches the green light or for no, he touches the red light and they used used it very well. That was probably one of the few times I was actually rather impressed. Because one, it's been a while since I saw a, uh, the game Simon. It's been a while. But, yeah, but other than that, there were so many few things about this damn movie I did not like. Uh, for one thing, like, the camera work was weird. I mean, I know it's found footage, so it has to be shot like, like it's an amateur. But there were times where... The camera work was too good. Like, there was a, like, and you see this in the trailer, like, it's at the beginning, uh, where, uh, like, a couple of gang members start chasing, uh, chasing Jesse and his friend Hector, and, um, and, uh, and you see, and you see the camera, like, like, like they're holding the camera down like like this as they're running and and to where you can see the gang members chasing them 
there's a problem with that. If you're running, if you're running, that camera should be running, should be moving. Unless, unless he is able, unless he has like the steadiest freaking arm I've ever seen while running. Because when I run, even even when, even even because um, if I'm running with a camera and I have it down here, it's still gonna move. That camera was steady. It wasn't moving. It looked more like they were dragging somebody than it was someone actually running with the camera in their hand. Um, uh, that was like one of the few times the, uh, like I said, that was like one of the few times the camera work was really, really weird. Um, but other than that, also, really nothing happens. Or what happens is so few and far in between because everything else is f just them walking around with a freaking camera acting like idiots like they'll they'll show them smoking weed at the grant at their grandmother's place or get like I said getting drunk uh, going out getting chased by gang members go using a GoPro attaching it to a to a laundry basket now granted this is something I would have done if I was 13 and sliding down and using it as a slide down a down the down the uh, set of stairs at the apartment and getting injured. And this kid was I think this kid actually got injured. Like this was an accident. Like they were expecting him to have a safe landing, but he actually got hurt. And they decided, oh well, he yeah, just roll with it. Yeah, sure, his bones are probably broken. But just roll with it. I mean, he was fine, but I don't really know anyone 18 or even older who would actually do that. Even I mean, well, I still have a mind of a 16-year-old, but I probably wouldn't even do that either because, I one, one, I cherish cameras like they're my children, if I had children. Two, I'm not that stupid to risk my life. I like to live. Um, other thing about this movie, um, the editing. Now, again, I get it. Amateur editing, fine. But it's like they actually hired some amateur editor to do this damn thing. This is some of the worst editing I have seen in my life. Like, I'm trying to remember if they did this in the last, in the, in the first three movies where they cut to black, and I think they did, but they didn't do it as often as this. They... They cut, they cut to black in this damn movie every, what feels like every 30 seconds, and I think it is. They're like, they'll talk about something. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, and then cut to black. Or they'll, they'll even cut to black in the middle of a freaking sentence. Like, they're discussing something that's supposed to be really, really important, and they cut to black. And they don't go back to it. Or if they go back to it, it's like, 20 minutes later and they don't and and I and it's basically gone from my memory by this point like for instance and this is where and this is at the climax and this is like the big twist which honestly was a bit surprising but it was also but it also kind of pissed me off not like not completely but I just felt like this was kind of cheap, to be honest. Like, at the beginning of the... Like, halfway through the film, um, after the uh, witch lady's murdered, uh, Jesse and Hector and their friend 
steal this woman's journal and they're translating it and they mention a, a door a door that a time traveling door this base this door basically takes you back through time to an unholy place at the climax of this film and and, and of course they don't mention it for the rest of the movie they don't i was like it's it felt more like a uh, a pass like just uh, just a just something they mentioned and and they just let it go this and and so in the climax hector who's the last survivor and and i'll get to some of the other people in this movie hector finds the door in order to hide from jesse who's now possessed who's completely possessed he's he's running he's hiding from jesse he's hiding from the coven who I swear, I mean, I know they are the, like, some of them are the same women from the third movie, but I swear, like, some of the shots were taken from the third movie. That's another thing about this editing. There are times where I, where it looked like they, they were using stock footage. But anyway, uh, he goes through the door. And he actually ends up in spoilers, although I'm although really, who's gonna care at this point? Because honestly, by the time you get through this movie, you you want it to end. You just want it to end. Um, he actually ends up in the last five minutes of the first paranormal activity. He's in, he's downstairs. He's downstairs at the moment when uh, Katie goes downstairs. And uh, in the first movie, okay, in the first movie, all you see is Katie leave the bedroom and she, you hear her go downstairs. In about five minutes, you hear her scream Mika's name and he starts going downstairs. And all you hear is this scuffle, this, scuffle, this, this, uh, this fighting and nothing. And then you hear nothing until like, and then you see Mika's body fly right into the camera. Well, now you see what happened. And this is where I was kind of pissed off. While this would have, while this was not a bad, not a bad way to connect to the other films. And of course they did this, they did, they did it. They also connected it to Paranormal Activity 2 by bringing the, uh, the teenage daughter from the second movie, the only one that survived, into this. But she, but she, just, she was just there for exposition. You basically forget about her ap at, immediately afterwards. But anyway, um, Hector's the reason why there was a scuffle. He's going. He's in this house, not knowing where the hell he is, not realizing he's in 2006. And he goes up to Katie, who's possessed, and she screams his name because she just realized there's someone in their house. And then Mika runs down. Katie grabs the knife and kills him. He's not. Hector's knocked to the floor and tries, but tries to get away. Jesse's there. Fully possessed, and this is the second time I j legitimately jumped because the makeup is actually not that bad. Jesse, uh, Jesse kills Hector. Katie turns off the camera. The end. But and this is but this is also where I kind of get pissed off. Is while it would have not been a bad idea for this, at the same time. I felt like they pulled this time traveling bullshit out of their ass. Like, I felt like this time tra the time traveling thing was. I mean, in really in any other movie, it would not have been a bad idea. But this is paranormal activity. I honest, honestly think this is the most realistic um, possession movie I possession series I have seen. Them throwing in par uh, them throwing in freaking uh, time traveling into this 
just felt so damn out of place. I I was just going, oh, they did not. Uh, other characters, yeah. Uh, the grandmother I liked. Uh, the grandmother was like one of the other people that knew Jesse was possessed and tried to save him. She dies because Jesse just throws her down the stairs. Or at, at least I think she dies. She, they say she's in the hospital, but I, I think she died. I don't remember, honestly. But she was like one of those grandmothers. I, she was like one of those people. I, I, um, I, like one of the few characters I liked. I actually cared about. Um, and the way, and the way Jesse, I, I'm just gonna say Jesse killed her. Because, uh, I, honestly, I don't think any little old lady would have survived a fall down a few stairs and have, with a puddle of blood around her head. There is no way anyone could survive that. He just turns and looks, at, heck, looks into the camera like this. Like the shit-eating grin. This isn't a, like an evil smirk. This is... This is like, <laughs> she fell. <laughs> this is how bad the acting is. Uh, the other characters I actually liked were not, like, one of them was impaired, it was actually a, a kind of a major character, uh, a minor support, a major supporting character, while the other one was just like his, his uh, I'm going to call him homeboy because that's what they were calling each other. <laughs> and they were gang members. Uh, the, the major supporting character is the adopted older brother of the kid that murdered the witch lady and who then jumped off of the, off the church. The, uh, and he's a gang member. He's like one of the few people that is actually willing to help Hector and the, the Hermione of the group, the other girl. Oh my god, the climax of his was also not only, I'm like, the last two minutes pissed me off, but before that, the climax when they get to the witch's house was hilarious. Oh my god, I laughed, I was laughing at how hysterical this was, because you got two, uh, two Latino gang members, uh, Hector and um and uh, Mari Soul, I think her name was, um, going to the witch's house, and I, and I this I think this was the same house from the third movie. I, I'm sure it was. I'm pretty sure it was. And all you, and they get to the trunk, and 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 the gang members pull out pull out a submachine gun and a shotgun and go, let's get. Let's blow these bitches away, man. I'm like, oh my god. This is gonna be fun. And and they're gonna sneak into this house. And the and the side and the sidekick gang members are like was like, hold on, homie, I got this shit. It's like picking the lock. And of course he dies without before firing a shot because he gets stabbed multiple times. Uh the the uh other gang member, the adopt the older brother starts blowing witches away. I'm not saying that, I'm not saying witches because I don't want to say bitch. I'm saying witches because there's like an army of witches attacking them. Like, I don't know what happens to the guy. I'm sure he dies. But he's just going out with in a blaze of glory. Oh my God, this guy had my respect. Just how awesome he was to going it was like, it, it's like a, he was acting like a video game character here. He was going, <laughs> I, I was laughing. This was like probably the only time I was actually legitimately laughing at something that was not meant to be funny. But it was. It was just too hysterical because these are some of the most cliched gang members I've ever seen. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There was another, there was another funny moment uh, that was not meant to be funny, but it was. Was when Jet, is was when uh, Hector and Marisol were driving by themselves, and this is before the climax, and they were trying to find Jesse. Jesse had already been kidnapped, or had, or had gone missing, at least. He, uh, 
they find Jesse, and you see this in the trailers. He's they're in the alley. They are going, oh my god, oh my god, get out of here, get out of here. They turn back, he's gone, and they turn and of course they they play it out more like he's like on top of the car, and just banging on the top of the car. Like you see a hand, like you briefly see a hand on the windshield. And of course, at the same time, I'm not scared at this because I saw this in I saw this in a trailer. Like they played this scene. They honestly, a lot of the scenes you see in the trailers are in this movie. So you don't. So you know what's going to happen. You basically know what's going to happen. Um, this, uh, and and of course, then uh, Jesse like appears in at in the on the driver's side of the car punch punches through the window and grabs Hector and starts strangling him of course there's a baseball bat in the back of the seat like you see in the trailer Marty soul grabs the bat I swear to god this is like this is the first time I started laughing was when she just she hits him in the head with a bat once and all you hear is a boom and he's like like, he actually, like, gets hit in the head with a baseball bat, stands straight up, and falls. Or hesitates, and then falls, like a cartoon character. I was laughing at how stupid and unrealistic this was. It's like, they didn't even try, they just stopped, like, even a, making it a tent. Like in the beginning of the movie, they weren't acting. They were ter or they were terrible actors. But by this point, they just they didn't even care. They just stopped because they realized this is this is fucking shit. <laughs> um so yeah, those were two points, two times I laughed at this movie. Um, so yeah. But yeah, this other than that. I just had a terrible time at the movie, at this movie. I was bored out of my mind. It is a, it is a chore to get through this movie. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, I just talked for the last five minutes saying, oh yeah, this made me laugh. I like these guys. You have to sit through this damn thing constant, uh, just for. God knows how long. I mean, it's almost 90 minutes, but it feels like an eternity. And you're just torturing yourself to get through to the end to where you can actually start laughing. Just legitimately laugh at this movie, at how stupid it gets. Um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, I mean, other than the grandmother... And, and the two gang members, I didn't like any of the characters. I thought they were cliches, or not not even cliches. I thought they just had no freaking personalities to me. Like, I couldn't even tell, I, like I said, I couldn't tell them apart because they were both acting the freaking same until Jesse gets possessed. But e even then, they start, they still act the same. Um, the, the big twist really just pissed, and kind of just pissed me off. And and I I didn't and I only jumped twice and when and and if you make me jump twice that doesn't still mean this movie's scary because it's not it really isn't the first three paranormal activity movies were scary were legitimately scary because they actually put some freaking effort into it uh other th and also other than them using Simon. As a means to talk about the demon, there was no means of of originality in using uh, in using the camera and or in using anything. I felt like they they just they all they were doing was just kind of doing the same thing from the first movie or uh, not the first movie but the sequels. Or at least they, what happened here was a lot of the activity was really five steps down from even the first movie. The first movie, like, they did only a few things with the special effects, 
but you at, but you can tell that they get they they put some effort into it like with the baby powder and the footsteps I want to know how they did that because that was really good I actually legitimately got got uh, freaked out by that uh, the the shadow and the door or in the walls again freaked out and and that's another thing about this movie the other three movies uh, well the third one had a few jump scares but they at least built up the suspense in this movie um, or not in this movie not in this movie <laughs> god no um, but they built up suspense in the other movies this movie's just jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, jump scare. They try to build it up, but you don't. But you know it's gonna happen. You you immediately know. Oh yeah, this is where there's gonna be a scare, and it's nothing but jump scares. There's no build up, none. So yeah, this movie's terrible. This is probably one of the worst horror movies I have ever seen in my life, and I have seen plenty. And I also happen to be a fan of bad horror movies. I enjoy bad horror movies. As long as they're enjoyable. This movie was a freaking chore. I could not stand it. So, final verdict on this. I'm going to give this movie a 2 out of 10. I know that's a little higher, but I think that's fair. I think, honestly, a 2 out of 10, it might as well be a 1.5 out of 5. I give this movie 2 out of 10 because it's boring. It's... They don't even put any freaking effort into it. The editing is horrible. The camera work is not, is not even that good either. And I know I'm saying that about found footage movies, about a found footage movie, but they're not, but it's like they're not even attempting to try and make it look like a found footage movie at time, at a few times. But yeah, this movie's not, this movie's not worth your money. Just watch the first three and just be done with it because this is nothing more than the Saw, the Saw series. This is the new Saw series and I knew that that was going to happen even after the first movie, because I knew there was going a sequel had been announced, and I knew immediately that they were gonna milk this to the point where I don't want to see it anymore. And there's gonna be another one of these movies, tort in the same year as this one, two Paranormal Activity movies in 2014, and and this one is not even Paranormal Activity five. This is a spinoff. The next one out this year is Paranormal Activity 5. Yippee. <sighs> uh, next week is Hercules, aka Spartacus meets with a Twilight stor love story. Um, week after that is Jack Ryan and Devil's Do. <laughs> you don't want me to get into that, into the trailer of that. Believe me, I am Devil's Due. I'm not looking forward to it. One is Rosemary's Baby with found footage, but it just I'm not gonna get into it. I'm sorry. So yeah, uh, so yeah, next week. Really, the whole month of January is coin is gonna be a little rough for me. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Uh, bye.